What started as an idyllic birthday weekend vacation for one Texas couple in Mexico spiraled into a medical and financial nightmare. Jared Hill was hit by a rogue wave, and his partner, Justin Rayford, pulled him out of the water as Jared said he couldn't move his body. He was instantly paralyzed. And that was only the start of the painful ordeal that they are still living. It was a perfect sunny blue sky afternoon and an idyllic birthday weekend. Justin Railford and Jared Hill, a couple from Texas, traveled for a vacation in Tulum, Mexico. They rented a cabana at a premier beach club. Playing in the waves, having a great day, just like hundreds of other people around us. Justin says he saw a rogue wave flip Jared. He ran towards him. He was under the water, his eyes wide open, staring up at the sky and pulled him out of the water. And he started screaming, I can't move, I can't move. So he had broken his neck in four places from hitting the uh, ocean floor and was com and completely paralyzed. I was running, you know, carrying him back to the beach, screaming for help. Um, you know, na waves knocking me over. And I was in so much shock and fear, like, you know, my legs were trembling. I obviously was screaming for help. And one of the managers for the beach club came over and I was like, he is seriously injured. I need an ambulance. Um, I'm pretty sure he's broken his neck. He says the manager said he'd call an ambulance. An American doctor was nearby and offered help. And I was like, yes, please. And the next thing I know, the manager told him to go away and started asked him to leave. Justin says over an hour passed. Jared was screaming in pain. No help arrived. I felt like something not right. Something, something isn't right. And I told Jared I was going to have to leave him. I said, I need to run back over to where my phone is because I was like, I got to call for help. He tried calling emergency numbers and also the hotel concierge who said, so I just spoke to the manager. No one's called an ambulance. And I was like, what in the world? And then as soon as he sent that message, he unsent it. Unable to get through, in desperation, he called the Red Cross. Jared is finally picked up. It took over three hours from when the accident happened to get him to the hospital in Tulum, which is only four and a half miles away. I mean, it's just like just down the road. I don't really speak Spanish, so they had to go grab somebody from inside. And he came out and he said, if you want us to take him out of the ambulance, you have to pay $5,000. He paid it. An MRI and testing revealed devastating damage. The neurosurgeon came and told us this is really a really bad situation. You have punctured your spinal cord. It's bent severely. You have nerve damage. You have internal bleeding. Um, you know, this, this could kill you and you, you may be quadriplegic. He says he was told his partner wouldn't survive being moved and must undergo surgery within 24 hours, but it gets delayed and then canceled altogether. At this point, I am literally begging for help because I am so worried for my partner's life. And I, I just started crying. I was like, I, what, I, I need help. Like, why, what is going on? Please help me. And he picked up his cell phone and showed me a, a message. And it was from the hospital director that said, I, I'm gonna cancel the surgery, get money out of him. So I said, what does that mean? And he was like, well, she wants, she wants cash from you. We are joined now by Justin Rayford. Um, I'm so sorry for what you have been through. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing with us tonight. Thank you for having me. I, I know that was hard to watch back. Um, first of all, yeah. where where are you now? Where is Jared now? How is he doing mentally, emotionally, and physically? How are you doing through all of this? Um, we're, we're in Houston, Texas. So as, as soon as um, I had the you know bandwidth to figure out where the best spinal cord injury facility was. I found that there's a hospital here in the Houston Medical Center called TIER uh, at the Memorial Herman Project. So that was my mission was to get him here for the best possible chances after we got him stabilized in Mexico. Uh, he had to undergo a 12 hour surgery there that was super complicated that they only were able to fix some of the problems. But he's he's here, and the this facility is absolutely amazing. The people here have changed his life dramatically, and I am 
happy to say that he is one of the edge cases that m most people don't have the outcome that he has. He is regaining some mobility and working with occupational and physical therapists every day to try to improve his chances at, at recovery. I'm so glad. I'm so grateful to hear that. And Justin, I can hear the emotion in your voice. What is what is going through your mind? What has this experience been like? It, th this is the scariest part, is, is I try to be a very prepared person. I knew where hospitals were. I knew where police stations were. We have international health coverage. Like, you feel like you're, you're safe. And Mexico is so close. And millions of Americans go there every year. And Tulum is the most one of the most beautiful places I've ever been in. And to have a life-threatening critical situation that you cannot get help, even even from the, the government, I called the embassy and the consulate, and they said, sorry, that's how it is in Mexico, to be held for ransom, to have life-saving surgery that the neurosurgeon said he needed or he was going to die, that you're you're in a hospital with people that you think they're there to help people and save lives. And it wasn't happening. Yeah. It's, it's like, and I, I and I realize I'm more fortunate than some other people because I'm a planner and I could come up with their ransom money. What would it be like for someone else? Would their loved one just die? And, and I want to ask you, because there seem to be multiple issues here. There's the hospital in Mexico canceling Jared's surgery, that text message you say you saw asking for money, get money out of them. And then there's also the resort manager's inaction. So first of all, what was going on at that hotel? Do you plan any legal action against them? What is the recourse? What happened that day? I, I'm not even sure because of ties to certain activities in that area now that I found out in I'm I'm honestly terrified to, to dig in even more um you know there's definitely corruption going on and are you talking I about cartel don't... activity or yes yeah okay and and did the hospital end up doing right by you or what what is the future and the plans with with this hospital you you felt that they were trying I... to extort you because you were an American for for money in order to complete a, a necessary surgery and, and we're not the only ones. There was another American couple that was there that had the exact same experience. Her, They were on their honeymoon, and her husband um, went into kidney failure, and they wanted uh, $50,000 from her to put him on dialysis because his kidneys and heart were shutting down. It's, it's like common practice. And um, you just can't imagine in situations like this, the, you know, my... my Every ounce of me was just trying to save his life and get help and, and to, to think that in a time of such critical necessity for medical help that that could even come up. And, and you know, I'm not talking about a copay or insurance or any of that. It's literally ransom money. And, and then they, they also told me that, um, hey, if we feel like you owe us money, we won't let you leave. Mm. I, I can't imagine the fear and the powerlessness and the helplessness through this situation. This is such a terrible experience that you describe. Um, I, I do want to ask you, very importantly, you have a GoFundMe set up for Jared. Yes. There are yes. enormous costs associated with this. Um, yes. How can people help? Tell us. Any Anything helps. Jared is the most sweet, kindest human I've ever met in my life. And so, so many people have showed up in so many various ways. And and obviously one of them is is donating to this to help with these costs because there is a lot of costs associated with it. And we honestly don't know what the future holds right now because spinal cord injuries are so complicated and you have like a year window before you even really know what your outcome is going to be like. So that's that was started by one of our best friends to help with some of the costs of getting here, staying here, all of the medical treatments and, and, and such that he needed. Yeah, Justin, I appreciate you so much. And I just, you know, can't say enough. I, how, I, I'm so impressed by the way that you tried at every turn to make sure that your partner had the, the best possible chance, starting with the moment that you were tired that day, you were gonna leave and you were, and something in your gut told you, no, I, I can't leave, I need to keep eyes on him. And that is the moment that he flipped in the water. Um, I, I'm wishing yes. you all of the best tonight. Um, Justin Rayford, please keep in touch with us. Thank you so much for your time. Wishing Jared the best. Thank you very much.